Okay, welcome to our first TMJ intraoral massage class. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is the facial structure. If you, both of you want to come in and stand behind me so that you can see some of what's going on. With Esperanza, or would you rather me use an alias? You want a, you want a porn name or something like that? Alright, so what you want to do <laughs> is... <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. But I, I've got her in a craniosacral traction hold right now because it's a very neutral position. Her chin is slightly elevated, her forehead is back. So if you look down the midline, straight down the midline, which is going to be right down the nose, do you see a deviation of her chin to the right? Yes. Okay, you see that. All right, now the next thing we want to do is, Esperanza, will you slowly open your mouth? Watch how the, the, the jaw functions. You see that it still draws to the right just slightly. Mm -hmm. All right, so that means that because there is a, a pulling to that side, that means that the muscles on this side are, are a little tighter, uh -huh. and the dysfunction is probably a little greater on the side that it's pulling to. You can close your mouth now. Another thing you want to look for in a classic TMJ, and Esperanza doesn't particularly have this symptom, but she has all, all of the others, is that when they open the jaw, you will see a deviation of a C, or an S pattern. And that's because the jaw is grinding inappropriately. There's been some deterioration, some cartilage in the TMJ or the temporomandibular joint and the arterial cartilage is starting to dysfunction. And in the literature it gives you a very specific description of what the C means and what the S means. Okay? So, I also want to palpate up here to this, this muscle which we no is the masseter, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. And I can feel her teeth. Her mouth is shut and her teeth are closed together. Give me just a little bit of a gap between your teeth there. And that forces the muscle into the neutral position. And it's fairly tight. You will often find trigger points in the masseter. And you deal with the trigger point in the masseter just like you would any other muscle. The other muscles that are involved here, we have the temporalis muscle, we have the hyoid, homohyoid, and glenohyoid muscles there. We have the lateral pterygoid, and the way that you find the lateral pterygoid is you've got the auditory opening of the ear canal. You want to find that area right there, and then you want to put your finger right in front of the hole onto the face, and then I'm going to ask her to open her jaw. And when she does, a divot will open up that my fingers slide into. I'm now palpating the lateral pterygoid, and that's a muscle with a funky spelling. It's P-T-E-R-A-G-O-I-D. So I'm palpating that, and with her mouth open, it opens up this space and allows my fingers to slide in. I'm doing slight circular motion. Sometimes direct pressure is enough, depending on how inflamed it is, but sometimes the, if they're super inflamed, the cir circular motion may be irritating for them, so I just do direct pressure. Now, the medial pterygoid, the way that you find that, if you go directly behind the ear, put your two fingers in a little space there right behind the ear, I'm going to ask her to open her jaw wide, and when she does, a huge divot will open up, and I can get two fingers in. That is the medial pterygoid. Now I'm going to ask her to let her jaw close naturally. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it's going to hit a little bump, and then it closes completely. Okay, those are the muscles that operate the jaw to allow you to, to chew, to grind, to grind your teeth, and then give yourself a wicked headache and a good case of temporomandibular joint dysfunction. So. With Esperanza, if we determine the root of the cause of her TMJ in the first place, she has a deviation of the chin. Esperanza, have you had any trauma to your face or jaw in your lifetime that you know of? Um, Car twice accident? when I was very small. What happened? Uh, fell right on my chin. Okay. Um, actually twice. Once when I was five, once when I was seven or eight. Okay. Can't remember. So we have potential for a trauma here. But something that we will see in, in a little while, when we also take a look at Esperanza's daughter, Mary, we'll see that, that Mary has a very similar set to her chin. 
So she had some trauma at an early age, but she also may have some congenital factors there too, that there may be something on one side that's a little longer than the other. Um, any tooth loss, any dental issues, braces as a child? Um, I had to have my wisdom teeth taken out uh, when I was 21. And yes, I had to have braces. They said, believe it or not, that my mouth was too small for my teeth. So they did a rapid palate expander and... and they didn't do a palate expander. They just slightly flared the teeth. Okay. That's all. They okay. didn't take any out. So they did a slight adjustment to the original alignment. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that factors into the chin also. Um, one of the things that they do in the dental field is um, they can go in and adjust your teeth when the, when the alignment is not correct. They'll grind down the surface of one tooth or another so that the teeth will close together more, more naturally, that they'll, they'll, they'll grind food more effectively. A lot of times they do that for teeth grinders. It takes the edge off and there's nothing there for them to, to fixate on. So you, when you're sleeping, your mind will do that automatically. But if they take away the fixation, then, then it allows you to rest um, comfortably. Okay, so Esperanza, how intense does your um, TNJ pain get at its worst on a scale of 1 to 10? At its worst? At its worst. Like when I first came to see you? Yes. 10. 10. Okay, so you were you felt like you were at your maximum capacity for being able to, to deal and to handle with this pain. Yes. So um, would, what would you say it is today? Mm. 4. Okay, so she's building back up. Now we had an mm -hmm. intense series of treatments with her initially when we started t treating the TMJ. We treated her several times a week for um, approximately four weeks, tapering down from three to four times a week, tapering down to once a week. And that got her under control. We occasionally worked the outside part, the muscles on the outside, in order to keep it under control. But frequently, due to whatever is causing her problem here, frequently, I'd say maybe two or three times a year, we need to go in and, and relax the intraoral muscles as well, which is what we did initially. We relaxed the, intra the intraoral muscles, got those to calm down. I showed her, I taught her how to do some of this on her own so that she could, in the, in the interim, when it would flare, she could go in and get herself some relief. And now we're to the point now where it's building back up to a four. Some days it's probably a little worse. Mm -hmm. Would you say it goes up to a five or a six on a bad day? Yes. Okay. Well, and you worked on it. And I worked on it recently. Mm -hmm. So what we're what we're seeing here is she is at the threshold now of needing an, a good intraoral addressing again. So the way that we do that is we want to do the normal relaxation stuff externally with the masseter the pterygoids, the temporalis, <clears throat> but I'm also going to go inside. So in that instance, Grace, you can hand me the gloves. I um, recommend that we use polypropylene gloves or vinyl gloves instead of latex because I personally am allergic to latex. I just want one for now. I'm allergic to latex, so I assume that everyone else is. I'm going to react if I put a latex glove on my and if somebody were to put a latex glove in her mouth and she were allergic and not know, she would respond with an allergic reaction that would get worse and worse. So just be safe, use the vinyl gloves or use something that is non-latex. And that is used pretty much predominantly in most medical settings now, I believe. So I'm going to use one hand in her mouth at a time. I take my non-gloved hand and I'm going to use that for stabilization. And as far as if you would open for me, the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to take my finger into the oral cavity and I'm going to ask her to close her teeth slightly. She doesn't need to clench. And I'm back on the very, very back of where the teeth come together. There's a fleshy part there and the muscular part. And I'm basically just putting direct pressure in there. And it's maybe probably about four or five ounces of pressure to start with because this, the first time you touch it is going to be incredibly sensitive. It's already starting to melt and relax. muscle is throbbing under my finger, but the throbbing is slowing down, and I'm sinking deeper into the muscle. So, I'm going to turn her head slightly so the camera can see just a little better my placement. My finger goes right beside her teeth. You want to be sure that when you stick your finger in there that you do not get bit, so make sure everybody's aware of what's going on. And just holding this direct pressure, there's no fancy movement at all, this muscle is relaxing tremendously. So, 
I've been in there for about 30, 45 seconds maybe. So I'm going to come out. And I'm going to need a paper towel. Thank you. Keep one of those closed so that we don't have um, bodily fluids flying around the room. Okay. And the next thing I wanted to do is open again. I'm going to stick my finger back in. And instead of going straight back, I'm going to go up at an angle towards her eye. Relax your mouth. Just let that close. And I'm going up practically into the sinus cavity. She's probably feeling some opening right up in there. It's like when you do a, a sinus release on the face at the end of a, of a massage. It allows those muscles to relax and the sinuses to open up. This is an internal version of that. You're affecting the sinus muscles. And you notice from her eyes that this is getting a little bit intense. It's very, very important to pay attention to what's going on on their faces. That gives you their pain level and what they're tolerating, how well they're tolerating. I'm pushing up right now, so I'm going to slowly slide back to the center. And then I'm going to push down towards her chin. And those are completely different sensations, correct? Yes. That doesn't hurt at all. Okay. All right, I'm coming back out. Stretch your mouth out. Open. When, and close. And when you've been digging around in there, it's always important to have them stretch the muscles. So big, open wide, stretch it out, move the chin around. And see, she has very little side-to-side -side movement in her chin. Mm -hmm. Very, very little. So that's another indicator that all this stuff is very, very tight. Her chin should be able to, to rotate from side to side.